Our scripture lesson this morning comes to us from the gospel according to Luke, chapter 24, beginning with verse 36. Let us together hear the word of God. While they, they meaning the disciples and the followers of Jesus, while they were still talking about this, and the this was the several appearances of Jesus that he had made to the women, to Simon, and then to those followers of Christ on the road to Emmaus, when they gathered together were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking that they had saw a ghost. When he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe, and while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You, you are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with the power from on high. This is... The word of the Lord. Will you pray with me? Our Lord of heaven, we come before you as followers, disciples, believers. Lord God, help us to hear your word this day. Help us to listen for your voice that we might be witnesses. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Luke says, And while they still did not believe, and while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, Luke says, and while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement. Other translations say, while in their joy, they were disbelieving and wondering. They're gathered together and all of a sudden in their hearts and their minds and their spirits, this, there's a collision. A cacophony of all things emotional. This is a thriller before thrillers had been written. This is the creeping up the stairs, going to open the closet, only to be suddenly surprised by something else just when you're relaxing. The disciples and the other followers of Jesus are gathered together comparing notes. Jesus had not only appeared to the women who culturally were unreliable witnesses. We'll get to that some other time. But Jesus had also appeared to Simon, presumably Peter, and to the other followers who were traveling to Emmaus, each of them sharing their story with one another, sharing their experience, what they had witnessed, and then poof, Jesus appears in their midst. Whoa, hey ho, 
Everybody's like, what is happening? The adrenaline is flowing. Check. Blood pressure is rising. Check. Heartbeat is racing. Check. Sweat on the brow. Check. Palms clammy. Check. And you are either in fight or flight mode. Check. Of course, of course their joy was mixed with their disbelieving and their wondering how could it have not been. Their joy may have been comparable to the joy that the parents of Xavier LaBelle probably experienced last week after that Canadian hockey team was in the bus crash that claimed 16 lives. Originally, Xavier had been misidentified and listed as one of the ones who perished in that bus crash. Can you imagine what those parents felt when they were notified that their son was not dead but is alive? That's what the disciples and the followers are feeling, joy and disbelief all at the same time. Joy and doubt and wonder and amazement all mixed up together. I imagine that might be what we feel on any given Sunday, not the motorcycle reference. It's probably what we feel on any given Sunday when we gather here. Some of us coming wondering. Wondering what we might find. Perhaps a word of hope. A new understanding. An epiphany. Some of us come with our doubts and our disbelief. Even perhaps our anger or frustration. And maybe we came out of obligation. And some of us arrived in joy, looking forward to seeing our friends, our fellow believers, eager to share that moment of peace, the passing of the peace, or inspired by the music, inspired by the prayers and the hearing of the words shared. Wonder, joy, disbelief, all mixed together so that no one is left out. We bring it all here together. So in our lesson from Luke today, we have gathered as a group of followers, they had gathered as a group of followers of Jesus, who were weak in the knees, exhilarated, perplexed, and doubting. They were curious. And today we have gathered as a following of Jesus, who are weak in the knees, exhilarated, perplexed, doubting, and curious as well. And what does Jesus do? He holds out his hands. He shows his feet. He eats with them and reminds these witnesses all that he had already taught them from the scriptures. These witnesses. These witnesses. That is what we are called, witnesses. Witnesses to Jesus in our midst. Witnesses to the transforming power of the resurrection. Witnesses to the healing power of faith. Witnesses to redemption through the forgiveness of sins. Witnesses to grace and mercy and compassion. Witnesses to service and love and hope. After the disciples and the followers felt the presence of Jesus, after they were helped to recall all that they knew to be true, after they shared fellowship with Christ in their midst, they were called to be a witness. Just as we are called to be a witness. Just saying the word witness probably created the same palette of mixed feelings of joy, doubt, and wonder that the disciples felt on that first day of the resurrection. 
You might think that you don't know how to witness or being a witness scares the pejeebers out of you. You think that you might be one of those bad witnesses like on a crime drama. The one with schizophrenia and they got to get them like medicated to be able to be reliable, right? Or you feel like you're on drugs or you're testifying because you're going to get a better deal or you're only a child. You know in those crime dramas, those bad witnesses and they got to prep them, right? Maybe that's how you feel. And any good lawyer will tell you, right Bryce, less is more, <laughs> right? When you're on that witness stand, you're supposed to say as little as possible. But it occurs to me that we are witnesses all the time. At least for the things that are important to us, we bear witness. That is, we tell about something. We tell someone about something that is happening on our lives, the things that matter to us. We tell others about great movies or television shows we've seen, right? Yes, yes, I will catch up on The Good Doctor and The Crown this summer, I'll binge watch. We share our joys and frustrations about the accomplishments or the failures of our sports teams. Go Ducks! <laughs> we tell others about our family and our lives, and our work, and our children, and our grandchildren. Hello, Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat. We're already witnessing. Christian expositor David Loos says, Witnessing is not really all that different when it comes to faith. Witnessing does not mean shoving our faith down someone's throat or threatening them with eternal hellfire. It's simply telling others where we have sensed God at work. At home or at our place of work, at church or at school, through a stranger or a friend, a doctor or a teacher or a neighbor, or even through ourselves. Bearing witness is nothing more than saying we think that you, God, are at work in our lives and in this world. We bear witness all the time. We're just not used to thinking about it in terms of our faith. So, I'm going to invite you in a moment to turn to one of your neighbors around where you're at. And I want you to just share something with them briefly that you would share all the time, something that comes naturally to you. Tell about your work or your family, your favorite hobby, your woes of your sports teams, activities that you're involved in. Just something quick and simple. I want you to turn to a neighbor, and I just want you to share something that easily comes to you. Ready, go. Okay, if one person has hogged the conversation, switch. Okay, that's enough sharing. All right, sum it up, sum it up. As you think about what either you shared or what was shared to you, I want you to think about what makes a good witness, right? Speaking candidly, simply, just being in conversation with one another. When we just talk about something good that's happened, is there one way to share? No. There you go. There's my answer. No. Does it have to be perfect? Nope. Doesn't have to be perfect. Witnessing can be easier than you think. 
So now I'm going to ask you to do it again. <laughs> but this time we're going to talk about faith. I want you to think about where you have experienced God this week. Where you have felt God's presence. Where you've seen God's work in the world. Whether it's in your personal life or your vocational life. Whether it was through this church or some other place. Where did you experience God this week? And I want you to share that with your neighbor. Go. Don't forget to let the other person share. <clears throat> All right, sum it up. There you go, sum it up. I would venture a guess that some of you might have felt that cacophony of feelings that was described in Luke when I asked you to share about faith. You felt the joy and the doubt and the wonder, the amazement, the disbelief, the exhilaration and the suspense of having to be a witness for faith. But that's what makes a good witness, a real witness to the truth about Jesus Christ in your life. So hold on to that. There are places for you to be a witness in your words by just sharing the truth about your experience with God. There are places that we've seen today for you to share your witness with your actions, with your hands and feet, so that others might know that Jesus Christ is real. Not a ghost, not an apparition. So congregation, I know you have it in you to be the witness that we are called to be out of the gospel according to Luke. To be the witness that we are called to be by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as he instructs us to do so. So let's go be a witness. Amen.